The analog pocket just had an OS update. Let's talk about that. Hello and welcome to Modern Broadcast. In today's episode, we're going to be revisiting the analog pocket. Analog just came out with a new OS update, the 1.1 beta, which is an open FPGA, uh, which is allowing you to play your Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games off a micro SD card. If you missed my initial review of the Analog Pocket, I strongly suggest that you give it a watch here, as today we're going to be talking about how to update the OS and play games off the micro SD. Let's get started! Alright, first things first, you want to go to the Analog Pocket website. I'll have a link down in the description below. But even right here on the main page, it looks like we have the Open FPGA. Uh, so if we click on this, so that opens up a page on the developer tab and it uh, kind of just gives some information about what the Open FPGA is. Um, but we're going to go ahead and go to announcements and we're going to download the OS version 1.1 available now. And this will give you a quick rundown of what changes in the um, OS update. So, um, as we see, we get the Open FPGA, Space War, which is the world's first video game preserved on the Open FPGA, live versions of library and memories with many other updates. So, uh, the Open FPGA is Analog's developer program allowing third party developers to preserve video game hardware. Analog has provided early access to several third-party developers. I expect to see the plethora of third-party open FPGA cores released over the next coming days, weeks, after OS version 1.1 is available July 29th, 2022. Open FPGA starts at the beginning. Space War. On PDP-1, the first digital video game alongside the launch of the Open FPGA is a third-party developed Open FPGA core of PDP-1 and Space War. Playable today on Pocket. Simply enter into Open FPGA on the home menu, select PDP-1 Space War, and select Run. This game is very rudimentary and quite frankly not great but it is neat to preserve history in a way um, and have make it available to the masses library so library on the os version 1.1 beta features a game detail screen when selecting play cartridge insert an authentic game cartridge and press play cartridge pocket will read the game cartridge <laughs> that's a lot of cartridge um <clears throat> Pocket will read the game cartridge and take you to the game detail screen, featuring game title, system, developer, publisher, region, and game revision. It will also show any user-generated assets associated with the game if you've installed them on the Pocket. See how to install user-generated images for Analog Pocket's library. In the near future, library will evolve into a reference-level database to play, explore, and share. A scholarly cataloging of the entirety of video game history. You'll be able to search and explore through its full breed of system by system, game by game, region by region, developer by developer, publisher by publisher, revision by revision. Memories. So this has been a long awaited feature, um, wanted by many, many people myself included, but Memories on OS version 1.1 beta features 128 memory slots usable by Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and Game Gear. Memories is connected to analog library and date and time, so every save state that you create will capture the game title, platform, and date and time directly from the game cartridge. Press analog and up to capture a save state. During gameplay, press analog to access the game menu and select memories to load or delete the save states. In the near future, memories will evolve to features that display each save state with a screenshot showing exactly where you were in game, when the save state was captured, alongside sorting options to view save states organized with your preference. If your analog came with the dock, the good news is with this OS update, you also get some features there. Dock with OS version 1.1 beta features newly added 2 player and 4 player support. It also features added support for many 13 Bluetooth and 2.4G controllers. 
to use these controllers on dock, make sure to update dock to the latest firmware and update all 8-bit do controllers to the latest firmware. Other updates include reduced lag, faster connection, improved range, connection, and input reliability changes. Analog also released an OS development schedule, ongoing features. They plan to do more updates August, with quite a few other features coming September, and some even listed for October. So let's go ahead and get our OS version updated on our analog pocket. We're going to go down here to the OS version 1.1 beta that's underlined here. We're going to click on that and we're taken here to the firmware update page. So here we have the 1.1 beta. It was released July 29th, 2022. And there's a download button. So we're going to go ahead and download this file. It's only 54 megabytes, so it will be fairly fast. Looks like down here on the bottom, we have some release notes. I definitely recommend you give this a read. Um, as we see here, here's that 128 memory slots for analog platforms. But however, we also have 128 memory slots per open FPGA core. So remember each system is a core. So Game Boy has 128 memory slots. Game Boy Color has 128 slots. And Advance has 128 slots you will be able to play all of your games and save states without any trouble. All right, so here we have our file here on our desktop. And I went ahead and plugged in my micro SD card that was in the analog pocket. As you see here, I have a GB Studio folder uh, for some games that I made on GB Studio. I'm hoping to make a video soon about making your very own Game Boy game. Um, and then it looks like we have this Pocket Firmware 1B Bin. So that is the first Pocket Firmware. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. And to update the OS is very simple. We're going to take our new file. Just drag it and drop right into the root of our micro SD card. Pretty simple. So now all we have to do is just close this and plug it into our analog pocket and boot up. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take uh, our micro SD card. We're gonna put that in to our analog pocket and we're gonna boot up the device. So upon booting it up, we see that it is now starting the install process. Um, this does take quite a few minutes um, to get all the way through, but it is installing that firmware that we put on the root of our micro SD card. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this portion of the video until it is completed. All right, so here we have it. Um, when it was done, it rebooted and it showed the Open FPGA uh, logo there. Um, so we know that it worked, and we are now asked to follow a short tutorial uh, to get an introduction. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and skip that. All right, and here we are. We are now at the familiar menu screen here, but we have Open FPGA. Most people are excited about the Open FPGA as it allows you to play games directly from the micro SD card. So let's go through that process. All right, so to get those cores, um, here we have the pocket cores. These are the known um, cores that work with the Open FPGA platform and more will be added. I'll have a link down in the description below with this website. Um, but we see here we have Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and Neo Geo and then Space War. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and we'll go ahead and grab Neo Geo. So that takes you to the GitHub page. We click on releases. We just wanna make sure that we have the most recent release. There's just the one. I'm gonna go ahead and download the zip file. Come back and grab Game Boy Advance. 
Again, releases. It's the only release. Okay. Go ahead and download. And go ahead and download the Neo Geo one. This one here is a pre-release. So I, I'm actually going to hold off on this until it's a little bit more finalized. And uh, we can test it out further. We then want to grab our micro SD card from our pocket. And go ahead and plug that into our computer. And this time around we see there is a lot more folders than what was there before. So I'm going to go ahead and extract. And basically what you want to do is you just want to drag and drop everything from here over to your micro SD card, exactly how it is. Okay. We'll merge that all together. If we will read the text files, almost everything should be supported by the score. Be sure your GBC BIOS bin file is in the assets GBC common before using. Uh, it should be exactly 23 or 2,304 bytes. So what's pretty neat is that note that the link port is fully supported, but unless a GB or GBC cartridge is plugged in, it will run at the 3.3 volts. Um, Rumble is supported. If you plug in a DS Rumble pack, games like Pokemon Pinball will utilize it if present. Enjoy. So I'm gonna do the same here for the GBA. Got our assets. Move that over to assets. Core, core. And let's read this text file. Uh, everything should be supported by this core. Be sure your GBA BIOS bin file is an asset GBA common before using. Note that the link port is fully supported and rumble is supported too if you plug in a DS rumble pack. Currently drill dozer is fully supported this way. WarioWare Twisted would be if there was a usable accelerometer. Okay, so that's pretty neat. Um, now, as far as the BIOS files for your GB, um, for your Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, uh, you're gonna have to uh, go ahead and back up your own or a simple Google search um, will kind of yield results for you. Okay. And so here are my um, BIOS. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Assets, GBA, Common, and drag and drop GBA BIOS there. For GBC, Common. And those there. And it actually doesn't want the GB one. So we're going to delete that and just have GBC. So what about games? All right, so I went ahead and got a few games together uh, to showcase how this kind of works. Um, so we have an official GBA game, a ROM hack um, of a complete fan-made uh, Pokemon Liquid Crystal, which is Crystal made for the Game Boy Advance. Um, it's pretty neat. It's probably one of my favorite ROM hacks. Uh, then we have the Pokemon Yellow uh, for Game Boy and Shantae for the Game Boy Color. So um, still in that assets folder, I'm going to go to GBA, Common, and I'm going to drag these two GBA games there. I'm going to go to GBC, Common, and drag these two games there. All right, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead take our micro SD card and we're going to put that back into our pocket and boot up the system. All right, so I went ahead and just plugged in the uh, micro SD card back into the pocket. Going to go ahead and boot it up now. Now, if we scroll down to open FPGA, we now see we have Game Boy, Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color. Go ahead and start at the top with Game Boy. Click Run. So as we see here, we have the Game Boy and Game Boy Color game, um, Pokemon Yellow and Shantae. So it'd probably be best on the micro SD card if I separated those into uh, their own files. Um, let's go ahead and boot up Pokemon Yellow. game is working no problem as we see here we have Pokemon Mystery Dungeon 
but we can take this out. And Pokemon Yellow is still going. Let's go ahead and run Game Boy Advance. So here's my two Game Boy Advance games. Let's boot up and see if a ROM hack works. So it's running at full speed, which is amazing. So I have here Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the back. So we see here that it did the the game screen, where it says Systems Game Boy Advance, Chunsoft, Nintendo, Australia, but there's no images. We hit play. So here we are playing. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna save this spot right here. So I'll hold the analog button, push up on the D-pad. All right, cool, so it says state saved. I'm gonna advance a little bit. Okay, and I made a mistake, so I'm gonna hit the analog button. Go to memories. And load that memory and there we are awesome okay so having the save states is great because if we are playing a Pokemon game and let's say our battery's dead inside of the cartridge um, we're not too sure about opening the cartridge up and replacing the battery that's inside um, you know you can use the save state and still save your progress um, while you're out and about on the go and you could still play your physical cartridge that way. A really cool feature that uh, I forgot to mention is that you can actually transfer save files over to your micro SD card and continue playing your games there. So if you do a backup of your physical game, you can then put it on your analog pocket and play that save file from the actual physical cartridge if you play with an emulator online, um, or if you play with an emulator on your computer or on your phone, and you've made decent progress and you don't want to start over from scratch, you can export that save file and bring it over to your analog pocket and continue where you left off. Uh, and then when you're done, you can simply just take that save file and put it back on your computer. Uh, transferring save files over to a physical cartridge is a little bit uh, complicated but it is doable with certain hardware and certain software so um, I'm very excited for the analog pocket as with this open FPGA OS updates I think this is where the systems life really begins thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please consider leaving a like and subscribe what are your thoughts on this OS update for the Analog Pocket? Have a great week everyone, take care.